Now, I hope last night you all went home and had a very good look at the people you flat with or live with or your kids or your parents and just checked out whether they were showing any of those pesky, like, political views or opinions which were a precursor to them being terrorists. Um, I hope you were checking to see if everyone had their hair braided or, or if they were sitting there knitting. That's very dodgy, knitting. And look, what I'm thinking we should do is we should have a daily briefing at the Beehive at about one o'clock every day where Rebecca Kitteridge, the head of the SAS, comes up and give us, gives us the terrorist count for the day, right? And we have little graphs and everything. And what's the terrorist count for the day? What's the spread of terrorism in New Zealand? And we just do that one o'clock every day. We could call it the podium of truth or something. I think they've got a template for doing that again. Um, as you can say, I, I am kind of taking the PISS out of this, but it is the most serious thing, I think, uh, or development for this increasingly dictatorial government that I've seen. I note that Kate Hanna from the Disinformation Project, who fundamentally believes that braiding your kids here, your daughters here, is a precursor to recruiting people into the Nazi party, um, Kate Hanna is trending very highly on Twitter, which is admittedly the nuttiest 9% of the New Zealand population on, on, on Twitter. But, oh, people aren't, people aren't convinced that the story she put out yesterday that they had to cancel the Disinformation Project special briefing for producers and, and journalists because of death threats. A lot of people aren't convinced that story is entirely true because they didn't actually put it out in a press release. She went to another Nazi hunter called Mark Dalder from Newsroom, and he wrote a story which I examined last night for hair braiding, just in case, and um, we haven't seen the death threats. I presume the police are investigating. We saw no details about the death threats, and while the headline screamed security breach, couldn't really see a security breach that had happened, except if you give a whole lot of information to a bunch of journalists and producers and you tell them it's really secret, you can almost guarantee, odds on, someone will leak it. So I'm really trying to see what all the problem is about. I have to say some people have been saying particularly nasty things about Kate Hanna uh, on Twitter and you should stop. Uh, no need to abuse her because of her crazy views. All right, um, and some of it is very personal and inappropriate and not civil. So stop that right now, uh, right now. Um, and you shouldn't threaten anyone with violence or, or with death. Um, but I'm not entirely convinced by the Mark Dalder story on Newsroom, and largely because Mark Dalder is a fellow Nazi hunter-traveller with... Um, with Kate Hanna, and he was, of course, was in the chaos and was in the Web of Chaos documentary as well, spouting his paranoid rubbish. Okay. Um, <laughs> sure, Dave says, yep, my wife was on Pinterest last night. What's the number for, for dobbing them in? I'm going to dob her in now, says Dave. Um, Sean, can we please get back to having a government that leads by aspiration and not fear? Sick of the 1pm fear session, says Philip. I think it's a great idea. The 1pm, let's fight terrorism briefing with Rebecca Kitteridge. She replaces Ashley Bloomfield as the darling of the media and we get updates on how many terrorists we can find um, sitting at home watching the wife knit. Um... And I have my tongue in my cheek, clearly. But it is bloody serious what's going on. And I think the reaction to this madness tells us that. One person who, along with me, was trying to get in, who was trying to get into the briefing for journalists, the secret briefing for journalists, an invite only, with, um, with Kate Hanna and the Disinformation Project and a bunch of other... Um, academics, use, use the term loosely, organised, of course, by the Royal Society and the Ministry for Business, Innovation and Enterprise. One other journalist who was trying to get in was my mate Martin Bomber Bradbury. Yeah, Bomber, Bomber probably hasn't <laughs> read the new guidelines, how to spot a terrorist, but having someone with the name Bomber, that's not going to play well. 
But I'll tell you what, um, uh, Martin's written about this. He and I have talked about this uh, offline for a while, and he joins us now. Uh, Bomber, good to have you with us, mate. How are you? Comrade, good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm doing very, very well. Well, we were both knocking at the door, weren't we? Knocking at the door of the Disinformation Project, asking why we weren't part of the special briefing. You were told it's because they were full up, and I was told it was because I wasn't subject to the Broadcasting Standards Authority or a member of the Media Council. Do you think we might have been the pesky people who, by wanting to attend, caused the thing to be cancelled? I've been very critical of the deep state uh, back to, of course, John Key's time when he was uh, the Prime Minister and the mass surveillance programs that were being pushed by the GCSB and the SIS. So I've had quite a deep sort of uh, uh, interest in this area. Uh, when I saw the, the Parliament protests at the beginning of this year, um, my immediate fear was that we were going to overreact to this that a decision not to de-escalate, and let's be very clear where mm. all this comes from, a decision mm. not to de-escalate that protest when it occurred was going to leave us with a whole bunch of problems. And one of the problems was the sudden ratcheting up of the police state and an expansion of SIS powers and another expansion of GCS powers and GCSB powers and... There, there was. I, I was watching the woke activists, the middle class identity politics activists on our side of the fence, on the left side, jumping up and down, excitedly calling for. Yeah, can I just say, Martin? Powers. Can I just say, Martin, for future reasons, I'm not on the other side of the fence. I am the fence. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. You are the fence, but I, I'm I'm very clearly left and very proud of being left, and I will always stand for the left. However, I do not like these middle class identity politics woke activists because I see them causing more alienation than actually bringing people to the face. So, so I'm very clear about that. Now, my fear was that if we did not de-escalate this, like adults, like responsible leaders, and while I disagreed with the protesters, I supported Jacinda Ardern and I'm a fervent supporter of her decisions over the pandemic. It was a once-in-a-century pandemic. We were running blind for a lot of it. I salute her leadership. However, in a liberal progressive democracy, you still have the right to protest. And a lot of people had been hurt by these sanctions. And they had the right to be able to turn up and have their views heard and taken on board. And I felt that if we went in hard, like many on the woke left were demanding that the military go in on day two and cleanse the lawns, but this sort of nonsense was going to only end up radicalising far more people. Now, were there bad faith actors out there? I think various documentaries have shown that there were some bad faith actors out there. But these things weren't happening in a vacuum. We have the, the highest in food inflation rates in 30 years. We have high poverty. We have inequality. We have a lot of pain and economic alienation and isolation occurring out there. And so to simply go in hard, like we ended up doing, I feared would create a radicalisation, which, of course, the SIS and the GCSB would then jump on board and say, well, Prime Minister, we have so Man, many... Man, I just want to interrupt you there because I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I think you have got the genesis of it wrong. I think the genesis of this goes back to the mosque shootings and our oh, reaction oh, look, and no, our no, no, moral you're, you're panic no, after the mosque. You're absolutely mosques. right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. That, 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 that was the high point of this violence, right? Yeah. But where I think we took the radicalisation to a whole nother level was how we interacted with those protesters on Parliament's lawns. That was, I think, an event that just impacted a vast mm. chunk more people and radicalised them. But you're, you're right, that was the high point, that terrible act in Christchurch. But now we've got the SIS coming out. When I, I, I'm just, I'm bewildered by the childishness of this. They did a poll, a bloody poll, and they said, oh, here's what we, we asked New Zealanders what they think the national security issues are, and this is our poll. Look, I'm not looking to a security intelligence apparatus to, to, to ask me a poll about what the fears are and what the threats are. That's their job. 
they're supposed to know this. Yeah, it and would be it would be ridiculous when in a Bond film opens with them saying, oh, "Well, 007, <laughs> we know that household shoppers with kids are, are very concerned about Mr. Goldfinger." You know, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And so we've got this classical situation of a poll being put forward as a, as a, as a starting point, and then it's branched into this woke, Stasi narc list because that's what this is, right? It's all Dobbin, your, your, who, who you think might be a problem. And, of course, this then justifies the SIS to turn to the government and say, oh, there are so many more domestic terrorists out there. We need to spy on all of them, Prime Minister. And then all of the security agencies start pushing and peddling their own private little fantasies. The New Zealand police wanting the face recognition cameras and software that will be able to track people in real time. They want those switched on. The SIS suddenly want extra funding. The GCSB, it becomes a self-feeding monster. And if you're paying people large amounts of money to go find monsters, they either have to create them or do some monstrous things to go find them. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is I think there are parallels here with the... Erosion of freedoms and the increase of the surveillance state in the United States post 9-11. And I'm saying that it is the not terror attack, in my opinion, which I'm allowed to have in Christchurch, and the protest at Parliament are creating the same sort of moral panic and overreaction here in New Zealand, or those circumstances are being manipulated by an author fundamentally authoritarian government to introduce similar madness like homeland security. And that's the fear that I have. Look, I do believe that there are bad faith actors out there and they knew, need to be dealt with in a, in a nuanced way and they need to be dealt with in a very intelligent way because if you don't deal with them in a nuanced way, if you don't deal with them in an intelligent way, you risk radicalising people even further. And that's what we saw post 9-11 with the sudden focus on all the Muslims, the sudden focus of screen that they were all terrorists without looking at, well, why were these? reasons out there. Why were these things happening? And I think that... Well, it might have been because they were saying we are Muslims and we're going to take down the West. And then well, we had yeah, ISIS. So, 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 I mean, it wasn't yeah, like and, they were, and, and, it wasn't and, like they were hiding, Bomber. People, and for some of those people living in uh, regimes that are propped up by the West, doing appalling things to their communities, you can see why they make that conclusion. So I think there are reasons why people flip out. There are reasons why these things happen. And if we're not adult about it, all we end up doing with the state coming in with a great big bloody hammer and thumping everything because it sees it as a threat, that actually is counterproductive. I remember reading uh, just recently the um, report into the ISIS terrorists who attacked the New Lynn Mall with the, with, the, with the knife, and he was shot dead, right? This was in New Zealand. Yep. And reading through that report, every single time the state got involved with this individual, it only seemed to radicalise them even further. And you cannot read that report and step back and go, did we actually push him right over the edge here? No. Because I think yeah. that that's the kind of headspace that we're going to be getting into here, yeah. where we're pushing people over the edge. And, 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 and these shouldn't we rely, Martin, shouldn't we rely, though, on the experts like the Disinformation Project to tell us what's really happening and we, how we're all being manipulated by the algorithms? Well, let's, and well, the... let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk about that. Now, of course, Stuff's docudrama, the middle-class docudrama, which just focused on the fear grifters and the, the QAnoners and, the, and the, the counter spin people and all of that, 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 that documentary, uh, off the back of that, stuff identified 200 people who were working with vaccines for freedom and the anti-vax people and the blah, blah, blah. They identified 200 people. Well, how many actually got elected, Sean? How I think 12. 200 terrorists? 12. Less than a dozen. Less than a dozen, right? Yeah. It was 11. It was 11. So... Well, if there was this great radicalisation that was going on that was a real threat to democracy, wouldn't more than a dozen of them have gotten elected? 
right? I think that the majority of New Zealanders are fair and good people who have no intention of violence towards one another, right? That is the vast majority of New Zealanders. And you can trust them to go, I'm not going to vote for these clowns or I'm not going to vote for this. These people are off the planet. There is a, the, I, I think there is enough goodwill out there to sort of look at these threats and go, well, they're not that bad. And the reason I wanted to go along to this disinformation program uh, 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 seminar that they were putting on for the right, and the righteous and the good of the New Zealand corporate media was because it sounded like they were going to be presenting in quiet a list of people who they think you shouldn't be talking to. That's why they wanted the news producers in there. That's why they wanted the journalists in there. It was a blacklist. Why couldn't we I believe... get? Why couldn't I get access to the list? Why wasn't I allowed to go? Because you and I both know there's a, probably a very good chance that you were on that list. That they would be saying, they would be saying, if you listen to the platform, I mean, it doesn't mean that you're a terrorist, but there's a chance you might be, right? And that's what they want to talk to the news producers about. Don't allow this person on. It's a blacklist, right? Don't allow these people on. Yeah. And I think that shutting down debate at a time when we need more debate, and one of the reasons why I support the platform is because it allows a place for people to talk and debate and argue that isn't within the very strict paradigms of woke dialogue, you know? Yeah. Because I think that that kind of straitjacket kills off democracy and it creates more shadows than produces light. Yeah, yeah, well, we well, well said, Bomber. More light on Do you things. believe the story that Kate Hatter, of course, gave her to, to, as I said, her fellow Nazi hunter, Mark Dalder, that they'd had a... I couldn't read the story. I couldn't find an actual security breach. Um, do you believe she got a death threat? We've got no Their details arguments. on that. I mean, well, I mean, look, number one, I mean, if you're not <laughs> currently in this crazy environment, if you're not receiving a death threat weekly, you're probably not doing your job, probably. I mean, I, I, I received one this morning. Um, I think that there were people saying things about her on Telegram. Um, uh, I mean, I don't go into that puss yeah. pit, but um, I think that, 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 that that's where they were going. However, I think it's disingenuous in the extreme to attempt to have a secret meeting with corporate media where you're, where, where we're not even going to know whether it, whose political opinion has been suppressed for the 2023 election or whose hasn't, right? Mm. And, and I think we've got a justifiable reason to know, well, who's, who's on this agreed list of, I'm going to censor this, I'm going to sell. I think we've that. got to know, we've got a justifiable reason to know what is the funding for the disinformation project and what is its relationship with the Prime Minister's office? Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and look, let me be very clear. I, it's not that I don't support what the disinformation, uh, uh, the academia that they've brought up. They have brought up some very interesting research that shows how social media So you is agree that people warping. who braid their kids' hair and put it on YouTube are uh, recruiting for white supremacists? None. In that particular quote, which I could not believe she made during that documentary, I actually gasped out. I think I was sipping some coffee and I had some come out my nose because I tried choked when I heard what her definition was. And that was bloody concerning. Um, but I have looked at some of their research stuff and there is some interesting information about how fast this stuff flows. So I'm, I'm looking at purely the data stuff. I'm not looking at her conclusions. I think her conclusions are deeply, deeply questionable and problematic, particularly when she starts driving it down those kind of roads, right? But I'm looking at their data and their data is strong. It does show that there is on social media uh, quite a manipulative influence. But the way you deal with Who that... Who does that come from, Martin? You... Tell me more. Oh, right, right. Oh, well, and, oh, oh, and in, terms of, in terms of volumes of, uh, for example, during the Parliament protest... Yeah, yeah, but Martin, thought... Martin, that's because you were getting better video coverage from the non-traditional news sources, and it was a news event. Oh, I, 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 absolutely. But I also think that when you track some of where that media or where those ideas are coming from, particularly uh, America, uh, some of the right-wing organisations... No, the video there, was coming I, from I, Parliament, I, you know? 
But you know, no, 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 yes, but in the, in the lead up to that event, you had a lot of other actors stepping up. And, 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 and their data points show that in terms of how many people were reading, how many people, how, what sort of... Um, yeah. You don't know through. what their and, personal and those reaction things, was. Those things, were being, those things were being kicked into play by the algorithms and social media. Yeah. So there are arguments about that. There are, and, 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 and they are worthwhile having. However, I've got real issues with their conclusions, and I wanted to go along to the meeting because I wanted to hear... Yeah, well, me too. Who, who are they? Who are they listing in terms of uh, who, who, who you can talk to? Who you can talk to, and who's actually in the room listening to this? Now, I was told. I saw it come out on the seventeenth. I applied on the nineteenth, and I was told, "Oh, sorry, it's all full up." Mm. How it got full up in two days, I've got no idea. But yeah. I, I get the feeling. Well, she's basically probably... said it was invite only, and it was meant well, to be invite only. It was handpicked well, journalists. Well, and that, and that makes it even more questionable, right? And so, and so I, I think that we need far more light on these issues. I think we need more debate and we need more spaces where you can have that debate, not less debate, not censorship of debate, because that's the shit that drives it underground. Yeah. Uh, look, are you going to dob anyone? And have you seen any knitters? Any people who might just have... And that was the scariest thing to me yesterday. <laughs> a, a new definition of what might be a precursor to violent extremism is just having a political view. Right. And if, if, if you have an us and them mentality. Well, Jesus, that's half the people probably listening to this show. That's half the people who are reading the Daily Blog. That's half of anyone who has a critical mind. Right? And what the SIS want here is they want as, as, as large a dragnet as possible because this is a functioning Stasi. This is a woke Stasi narc line. And we saw what happened with Rachel Stewart in 20, uh, 2021, right? When a whole bunch of woke activists manufactured one of her tweets into a threat. That's right. Yeah, community. yeah, that was appalling. And then they stormed into her house, the police. Yeah. And they took her guns. Now, they had to end up giving her guns back because the whole thing was bullshit. But, but you can see people who don't like Sean Plunkett, for example, are going to be ringing that SIS Oh, no, I imagine. I hope I'm into... I, I would hope right? to become the most reported person on it, actually. And, and, and it's see, a life this goal. Is, this is crazy. Because and this is crazy because I do argue and do believe that there are extremists out there who could do political violence in New Zealand. And those people need to actually be watched. But well, that's not what this woke Stasi narc line will do. What this will do is it will just increase the net. And the SIS will turn to the government and say, we need another $100 million. Your, your, your Highness, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so I see this not as actually saving us and protecting us from, and because there are extremists in our society yeah. and our communities who want to do ill will, who want to do political violence. Now, I may disagree with you on a whole bunch of issues, but I'm never going to, I'm never going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to raise my hand to another New Zealander because they think differently to me, right? Yeah, I'm not going I get to do you. that. I believe that most New Zealanders, I believe most New Zealanders feel the same way. But mm. there are a few out there who are a danger, and it is the SIS's responsibility and obligation to protect us from that. But that's not what this is about. Yeah. This is about an enormous ratcheting up of budgets, an enormous ratcheting up of control and power, and we're not safer for it. We're yeah, not, not one iota. Martin, I do need to, before you go, address one issue. I've had a few texts on it. Some people have taken offence to what I thought was a very good satirical line, but you can address this. Dumb loves matter. <laughs> you call I the thought protest. it was a hilarious, hilarious line. Look, uh, I don't agree with these protesters. I've made that very clear a thousand times before. Mm. I think a lot of it was um, I, I, I agreed with the government's position. I, I wasn't perfect. There were mistakes and problems along, made along the way. But in the real time, once in a century pandemic, I think we did well. Um, I, I, I didn't agree with their reasons for protesting. However, I understand their pain. I understand their reasons for protesting. And I also defend their reason and their right to protest. My focus has always been on Trevor Mallard. My focus has always been on the mistakes and 
phenomenal cock up he made on that parliament lawn that has led us to where we are now. My focus is on him, but you know, dumb lives matter. <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, hey, I'm a, I'm a satirist. Is what I do. Martin, uh, really good talking to you, mate. Um, geez, your middle, you know, your nickname, Bomber. You ever yeah. think about changing that in the new Starsy th- Starsy thing? Because you'll be keeping them very busy. Every time I try to get through airport security, it's a problem. Every, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Every time I try and leave Wellington Airport, I always get hassled by the, by the jumped-up parking warden uh, uh, airport security who always hassle me, always hassle me when I go through airport security. <laughs> Good on you, uh, Bomber. We will talk soon. That is Martin Bomber Bradbury. He's a left-wing uh, blogger. He was one of the oldest bloggers in terms of his blogs, one of the oldest in the country. It's called The Daily Blog. We often publish his stuff after we've taken all the swear words out on our excellent opinion uh, uh, piece uh, on our, our website and our app. Jeez, I, I agree with much of what he said.